In a previous video, we looked at polar coordinates in two dimensions and how to compute double integrals using them. In this video, we'll look at cylindrical coordinates in three dimensions and we'll use cylindrical coordinates to compute some triple integrals. The cylindrical coordinates of a point P in space are given by three numbers, r, theta, and z, where z represents the height of the point above the xy plane. And r and theta are the polar coordinates of the projection of the point onto the xy plane. In other words, r is the radius of the projection of the point, and theta is the angle that projected point makes from the positive x-axis. As with polar coordinates, we allow r to be either positive or negative. And the negative r just means you rotate by 180 degrees around the z-axis from where the positive r would have taken you. So for example, for this point, where r is 2, theta is 2 pi over 3, and z is 1, that means our point is 1 unit above the xy plane at a radius of 2 and an angle of 2 pi over 3 from the positive x-axis. We could also have described this point using the cylindrical coordinates of negative 2, 5 pi over 3, and 1. Please pause the video for a moment and see if you can find equations to relate the Cartesian coordinates of x, y, and z to the cylindrical coordinates of r, theta, and z. As with polar coordinates, x is given by r cosine theta and y is given by r sine theta. z is the same thing as z whether you're talking cylindrical or Cartesian coordinates. r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, just like for polar coordinates, and tangent of theta is equal to y over x, just like for polar coordinates. You may have noticed that cylindrical coordinates are pretty much just the same thing as polar coordinates with the extra coordinate z added on. Please pause the video for a moment and see if you can describe the surfaces in three-dimensional space that are described by these equations in cylindrical coordinates. r equals 5 describes a cylinder of radius 5. Theta equals pi over 4 describes a plane that's at an angle of pi over 4 from the positive x-axis. It's a plane and not a half plane because r could be positive or negative. And z equals 1 describes a horizontal plane at height 1 above the xy plane, just like in Cartesian coordinates. Let's use cylindrical coordinates to describe the region above the xy plane that's bounded by the cone z equals 4x squared plus 4y squared and by the plane z equals 6. So that's the region inside this ice cream cone shaped figure. I think it would be helpful first to describe this cone in cylindrical coordinates. Since x squared plus y squared is the same thing as r squared, this equation translates into z squared equals 4r squared. In other words, z is plus or minus 2r. In fact, we can write this more simply as just z equals 2r. That's because each point on the cone can be described by either a positive r or a negative r by adjusting theta accordingly. And we can just assume that we're representing points on the top part of the cone by positive r's and positive z's, and the bottom part of the cone with negative r's and negative z's. Now to describe the inside of this region, I find it handy to start with bounds for the z values in terms of the other variables, and then worry about the r and theta value bounds. Z can get as small as it is when it touches this cone and as big as when it touches the plane. That means that for the inside of the region, Z is bigger than or equal to 2R, that's what it's equal to when it's on the cone, and Z is less than or equal to 6, since that's what it is when it's on the plane. To find bounds now for R and theta, I find it handy to project this three-dimensional region onto the xy plane or the r theta plane and see what shape it spans. In this case, it'll span a circle where the radius is between 0 
and three. The three is because the very widest part of the region is up here, where z is six, and since z equals two r at this widest point on this cone, when z is six, r will have to be three. Theta can be absolutely anything, but I'll bound it by zero to two pi to get all the way around without redundancy. So these three equations describe our region in cylindrical coordinates. Now we're ready to try a problem involving integration using cylindrical coordinates. We want to find the mass of a solid cone bounded by z equals 2r and z equals 6 if the density at any point is proportional to the distance from the z-axis. Well, this is the cone we've just been talking about. I'll draw it again. And we know that we can find mass by taking the triple integral of density. Density is proportional to the distance from the z-axis, so that means it's some constant, I'll call it k, times distance from the z-axis. Distance from the z-axis is the square root of x squared plus y squared, or using cylindrical coordinates, we can write that as the constant times r. So we want to take the triple integral of some constant times r with respect to volume. We need to find still the bounds of integration, and we also need to write dv in terms of dr d theta dz. Recall that in polar coordinates, the area element dA was equal to r dr d theta. So in cylindrical coordinates, dv is going to be equal to r dr d theta dz. So we want to integrate k times r times r dr d theta dz. And finally, we need to put together our bounds of integration. From the previous page, we know that z is ranging between 2r and 6, r is ranging between 0 and 3, and theta is ranging between 2 pi and 0. If I write these down in this order, r on the inside, then theta, and then z, I run into a problem. My bounds for z still include other variables, namely the variable r, so I won't actually get a number or even a, an expression with k in it out of this integral. Instead, I better integrate in a different order. I'm going to integrate with respect to z first. After that, it doesn't really matter which order I do, since my other bounds just have constants in them. So that gives me this expression where now z goes between 2r and 6, r goes between 0 and 3, and theta goes between 0 and 2 pi. Integrating one variable at a time, I first get kr squared z, which evaluates like this. Next, I get, let's see, 2kr cubed minus k r to the fourth over 2, which simplifies to 27 halves k. And one more integration gives us 27 k times pi, where k is the constant of proportionality. The method we used in the previous problem works in general. Whenever we have a region of space that it can be described by theta in terms of two constants, r in terms of two functions of theta, and z in terms of two functions of r and theta, then we can integrate a function with respect to volume using cylindrical coordinates by doing an iterated integral. Theta goes between alpha and beta. r goes between its functions of theta and z goes between its functions of r and theta. Of course, we have to convert our function into cylindrical coordinates. We can do that by substituting in r cosine theta for x, r sine theta for y, and z just stays as z. And then we have to write our volume element dv as r dz dr d theta, using the same order as our bounds of integration. Integrating with respect to cylindrical coordinates is especially handy when our regions that we're integrating over 
are either cylinders or cones. Cylindrical coordinates are a lot like polar coordinates, just with an extra z coordinate attached. And the same ideas work to integrate with cylindrical coordinates. Namely, the volume element gets broken down as r dz dr d theta.